What's carding? What's combing? Today we're going to be talking a little bit about these things as they relate to my Tudor flat cap project where I'm trying to recreate a Tudor flat cap as closely as I can using historical methods. If you saw last week's video, we talked a little bit about the history of the caps, what they are, what they look like. And this week we're getting started on the reproduction. So carding and combing are two different methods for preparing wool for spinning. They both result in different yarn that behaves differently as well as being good for different types of wool. Combing uses combs and it's an older method because you, you don't need to have the technology to draw really little bits of skinny wire. You can use fairly thick wire for the combs and it works. Combing wool arranges all of the wool fibers in perfect parallel position to each other. It's very good for long staple length wools as well as for separating out an undercoat and overcoat and double coated sheep. Now carding like combing will untangle wool fibers a bit as well as loosen them up in pre preparation for spinning however it does not align everything parallel to each other. Carding is better suited for short staple length fibers as well as the shorter undercoats of double coated sheep. Wool that's been prepared using combing will create what is known as a worsted spun yarn, which is denser and stronger than the other option of a woolen spun yarn. A woolen spun yarn is created by spinning fibers that have been carded. Introducing more air to the final yarn. So a woolen spun yarn is going to be fluffier, lighter, airier, and therefore warmer, although a little bit less strong than a worsted spun yarn. Now for which one to use for the cap, my thoughts had been to use a woolen spun yarn because lighter, fluffier, and warmer seemed like a good idea for a cap. And then I ran across the 1571 Cappers Act issued by Elizabeth I, which lists the processes involved in making a Tudor flat cap, and in those it lists carding, which seems pretty pretty definitive of which one should be used for caps. So that is what we're going to use. Although it does lead to the interesting problem of looking at images of spinning with spinning wheels from the time everybody's using a distaff. Like, everybody's using a distaff. I will have to go back and double check and look again to see if I can find an image of somebody spinning not using a distaff which begs the interesting question that I have not been able to answer. And if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments because I have been like looking and looking and looking and I can't figure this out and I can't find a blog where anybody's tried it. How do you dress a distaff with carded wool? Like I know how you do it with combed wool because you can just wrap it around the distaff and then tie the ribbon to keep it in place, but I have no idea. No idea for carding. So, if you know, let me know. Because I would like to know that answer. So for this project, I'm using my Clun Forest fleece that I have, and I will need to pick the fleece first because it's it's been washed, but it's very densely compacted, and there's a lot of vegetable matter in it still. So I'm going to hand pick it first, just to loosen it up and get a lot of that out and make my job carding it easier and then I will go ahead and card the wool.
Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this project, you can check out the playlist for last week's video about the history of caps. Or like this video and subscribe so that you catch next week's video where we talk about S-twist and Z-twist yarns in the context of historical caps. Mm -hmm.